Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about viral genetics and I have divided it into two parts. The first part will contain the process in which there will be exchange of genetic material. So let's write it here. There is exchange of genetic material and in the second part that is on the right side we will discuss all those process in which there is no exchange of genetic material. Okay. So the process in which there is exchange of genetic material are first one is recombination So let's try to understand what exactly is the recombination. See, here is virus A. And here is the genetic material of virus A. Okay, now we have virus B. This outer part is the protein capsid and the inner part is the genome the genetic material. Now, when they, when both of them infect the cell, they open up their genomic material and when the genomic material comes out, here is how they interact. Let's say this is the genomic material of the virus B and here is the genetic material of virus A. Now, both of them will exchange the genetic material wherever there is similarity in the base. So, when the exchange occurs, we will see something like this. This is how it appears. So, now the virus that will be formed from this will have structure something like this. This is how the recombined virus appears. Okay, this is the process of recombination. Now the main thing to remember here is that when this kind of recombination occur between a virus and a host cell, it can lead to malignant transformation. I hope this process of recombination is clear to you. Now, the second process that we are going to discuss is reassortment. And this is very, very high for USMLE step 1. So, in reassortment, a similar thing happens, but what happens is that reassortment occurs only in segmented virus. That, that means virus that contains segmented genome. That is the first requirement. And can you name few virus uh, that contain segmented genome? Okay, so the mnemonic for that is BOR, B O A R, and the viruses are Bunya virus, Orthomyxovirus, Arena virus, and the last one is Rio virus. Now, what happens here is that let's again draw the virus this is the out outer protein capsid okay and the genetic material here is segmented that is there are so many small particles okay and there is another segmented virus both are of similar type for example if this is influenza this one will also be influenza but they will have certain different characteristics like there is the outer viral protein will be slightly different like for example if this is let's say H1N1 and this can be H5N2 this is just for example and this contains also the segmented genomes now when the virus enters the cell it opens up all its genetic material and some segmented genomes are exchanged between both of them for example this segmented genome will pass into this and here the segmented genomes will go into 
another virus and the new virus that is formed will again have characteristic of both of them this is reassortment now why reassortment is very very important first of all it is often asked on USMLE and the second thing is reassortment is responsible for genetic drift and genetic shift genetic drift and genetic shift so what is the difference between genetic drift and genetic shift see in genetic drift there is accumulation of mutation over time that, that means this is a gradual process the viral keeps on changing and changing and when there is accumulation of lot of changes then there is kind of localized epidemic arising uh, due to genetic drift but in genetic shift it is more dangerous and it causes vast pandemic globally okay and uh, here there is sudden change of genetic material and when genetic shift occurs our immune system is almost helpless against that virus okay and now to remember which one is more dangerous say if you remember the word the letter F from the spelling of shift it will give you a spelling that will help you remember that shift is more dangerous than drift now one question arises that why this kind of reassortment does not occur in bacteria okay Th that's a natural question to come so the reason is that uh, in bacteria first of all not all bacteria have this kind of segmented genomes and second thing is bacteria do not open up their genetic material in the host cell where virus they open their genetic material in the host cell and that's why there are more chances of this kind of exchange occurring so that was all about uh, reassortment and yeah the main example the classic example is uh, the H1N1 influenza pandemic that occurred in 2009 now what was very specific about this influenza pandemic was that okay, all the all the influenza pandemic that occurred before this had a mixture of human virus and avian virus that is virus from the birds but this one was the first pandemic in which there is involvement of virus from swine and that's why this pandemic uh, this influenza was named as swine flu I remember I was in high school and our biology teacher had explained this whole pandemic to us now this was all about the processes in which there is exchange of genetic material now we will learn all the process in which there is no exchange of genetic material so the two main process here are first is complementation and second one is phenotypic mixing okay I think I messed up the spelling sorry okay so complementation and phenotypic mixing now in complementation what I call this as a true friendship okay because see what happens here is that there is one virus and there is other virus the second virus is completely non-functional okay it is defective while the first virus it is functional so what happens is that this virus which is functional will provide the outside protein to the defective virus it means like a rich friend who is helping a poor friend right so what happens is that this defective virus will now have outer capsid of the functional virus and the genetic material of its own this is the genetic material okay so this is complementation the poor the rich friend is helping the poor friend with all the necessities that uh, this defective virus is needing that was complementation and again this is very high yield. if uh, if you ask me about two main things that you should focus on in viral genetics then they are reassortment and complementation because that's how they ask the question mainly on reassortment and complementation 
so here the example is hepatitis b hepatitis b giving the hbs antigen to hepatitis d without hepatitis uh, without the help of hepatitis b hepatitis d won't be able to survive and that's why this is the classic example of complementation hepatitis d receives this hbs antigen from uh, uh, hepatitis b and it infects the liver cells now the phenotypic mixing is very similar to complementation but there are few minor differences here also there is one virus with its genetic material there is another virus with its own genetic material sorry okay here also there is exchange of only the outside protein capsid there is no exchange of genetic material but the main difference is that here both the viruses are functional and the exchange can occur in any direction that means this virus can give uh, its outer protein to the first virus and the first virus can give its outer protein capsid to the second virus so it can occur anyway but let's try to understand it in this way okay so this is phenotypic mixing now understand that in complementation and phenotypic mixing the progenies that will be formed that is the daughter cell will again have the characteristic of the original cell that is from this again the original cell will be formed because the genetic material is uh, belongs to the original virus and here again the same thing happens okay so the again both appears very similar process but the main difference is again here one virus is completely dysfunctional while here both the viruses are functional and here one virus is helping the other virus that is the transfer is going in one direction while here both the virus are helping each other okay so that was all about uh, viral genetics